we're not done with the goodbyes, unfortunately. So um, it's September, and that means that uh, we're ready to graduate the council class of 2016. They've uh, done their four years of service. They've been judged to be rehabilitated, and uh, we're ready to release them back um, into uh, their other life. So um, I'm going to uh, say a few kind words, and Eric is going to hand out some lovely parting gifts to our retiring members. And let's start with uh, Joe Ecker. As an executive secretary, it's a pleasure to work with somebody like Joe because you can assign just about anything to Joe. Uh, he's been involved in large-scale data production activities, consortia science, plant genetics, uh, epigenetics, gene expression, and model organism database. I just throw it at Joe and he just takes it on. Um, Joe has served on a couple of uh, really challenging and difficult review committees for me. And uh, so I've known him for a number of years before doing four years on council. And I was reflecting about this last night. I think despite all that work, I don't remember a single time when Joe has complained about anything. And I can't tell you what a pleasure that is as an SRO or an Executive Secretary of Council to have low-maintenance reviewers. So, Joe, I can truly say it's been a pleasure to work with you. <laughs> Howard Jacob. Uh, Howard has uh, a very uh, interesting perspective that he has uh, brought to the Council uh, and it's made him a very valuable person. When I first met Howard, probably almost 20 years ago, and uh, he was a molecular geneticist who worked in model organisms and touted the uh, glories and benefits of working with the rat. And I knew Howard as an applicant and as a review panel member. Um, but more recently, he's done some um, uh, very transformative research uh, at the Medical College of uh, Wisconsin, uh, taking on clinical sequencing before it became the routine practice that it is now. So Howard really has a foot in both camps. He's a basic scientist by background and training, and uh, more recently, uh, somebody who understands the value of, of clinical sequencing. And that kind of balanced perspective is really essential to have on this council. So Howard, we wish you well, and thank you. So Bob Nussbaum. Bob's been a friend of NHGRI for maybe 25 years. He was one of the first faculty to be recruited and work in the intramural program. He was the original uh, pro project manager of the CIDR, Center for Inherited Disease Research, centralized genotyping facility. He launched that, drew broad support from maybe 14 different institutes at NIH, and CIDR's been a smashing success. Um, Bob is somebody who is easy to trust. Um, I have a lot of faith in everything Bob says to us. In my experience, Bob is equally comfortable telling you you did a great job with that, and he's just as comfortable telling you you kind of screwed that up. <laughs> and I find that refreshing, Bob. <laughs> I hope I didn't just bring a lot of criticism onto myself from the rest of you. Um, but uh, Bob has been a, a trusted member of this council, and I remember five years ago sitting down with Eric, talking about the nominees and saying, who do you want to put on the council? And the first name out of his mouth was Bob Nussbaum, and there was a little argument about that. So Bob, thank you. So we have three other members that we're going to say goodbye to, but they're going to tune in and watch this um, on the uh, uh, archive, council archive. So I'm going to say some kind words about them as well. Uh, Lucila Onamachado, she'll be with us tomorrow. She couldn't be here today. Um, Lucilla falls under the category, I, I will stand by the assertion you can never have too much informatics expertise on any advisory panel. Um, and Lucilla has been very valuable to us uh, for four years. Um, she's a great advocate of training, and uh, she uh, gently nudged us over and over again to consider expanding the training budget. 
she stayed on council long enough to actually see that happen. Uh, we, we are very grateful to her for that, uh, uh, asserting that on us. I think uh, as an SRO and exec sec, I've never met anybody who is so keenly attuned to uh, conflict of interest. Uh, she's very uh, respectful of the process, and I had, because Lucilla is uh, uh, so well known and has so many uh, collaborators, I had lots of excruciating conversations with her, parsing out the relationship between her and her collaborators and the application. Uh, she's, um, her respect for conflict is just beyond reproach, and I admire that in anyone. Um, so uh, we thank Lucilla for her four years of service, and you'll all have a chance to speak with her tomorrow. Uh, Lon Carden was on the phone with us earlier, but he's actually in the UK. It's six hours later over there. He might even be in bed at this point. So we can say anything we want to about Lon. <laughs> um, I'm here, Rudy. Oh! <laughs> now we can really say whatever we want about Lon. <laughs> Well, I have to go to the other page for comments now. <laughs> um, Lon is also trustworthy and dependable, and you can believe anything he says. Uh, again, falling into that class or category of low maintenance advisors. Uh, always a pleasure to work with Lon, and he always brought the very interesting perspective of somebody who had been an academic researcher for a number of years and then changed careers and, um, as you all know, has been working in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, that's been an important perspective for NHGRI to have. Uh, his knowledge of uh, population genetics and genetic epi epidemiology has been very, very valuable to NHGRI as well. So, um, Lon, thank you very much for four years of devoted service and for staying up late to stick with us to the very end. And the last member who's retiring this year is uh, Artie Rye. She couldn't be with us today. Uh, I've known Artie for almost 20 years as a peer review member, uh, as a grantee, and for the last four years as a council member. Uh, Artie's expertise is in intellectual property, and um, that was enhanced by a time, maybe a year, year and a half, working in the uh, patent and trade office. Um, so her knowledge of uh, technology and tech transfer is exquisite, and uh, she's been a valuable member of the LC research community and a valuable member of this council. And we thank Artie as well. Okay. I, I wish. It's too bad she wasn't here. It'd been good to have a Duke person here when Eric Dishman yeah. was, was doling out his rivalry chance. Yeah. So I know I've said these words before or something like it, but it's no less true now than it's been in the past. Serving on council is an honor, and it's uh, probably one of the more interesting things that you'll do. Uh, it's also a great responsibility, and um, we were fortunate to have a budget increase last year, but the first three years that these uh, uh, council members have served here have been challenging times, times of flat budgets and even budget reductions. Uh, NHGRI is faced with making really difficult choices. Often there is not a good or obvious choice. Um, and I admire the willingness of the council to uh, help us to hang in there and engage in discussions that uh, are not easy, they're not fun, and sometimes they're just downright painful. So um, thanks again to the six members that are uh, leaving us. and. Um, we know we'll see you again because there are workshops and consider the peer review opportunities that are now open to you. Okay, so uh, we're just about done with the open session. Uh, the last piece of business to do is for me to read the conflict of interest uh, statement to you. And again, this applies to all of the uh, applications that you will review in the closed session of council. You must leave the room when an application submitted by your own organization is being individually discussed. In the case of state higher education or other systems with multiple campuses geographically separated, own organization is intended to mean the entire system, except when a determination has been made that the components are separate organizations for the purpose of conflict of interest determination. You should avoid situations that could give rise to changes of conflict, charges of conflict of interest, 
whether real or apparent. For example, you should not participate in the deliberations and actions on any application from or involving your spouse or child, a recent student, recent teacher, professional collaborator, or with someone with whom you've had, you have worked closely or have a close personal friendship, or a scientist with whom you've had long-standing scientific or personal differences. The NHGRI staff will determine the appropriate action based on recency, frequency, and strength of such associations or interest, either positive or negative, and will, will instruct you accordingly. In council actions in which you vote on a block of applications without discussing any individual one, the so-called on-block action, your vote will not apply to any application from any institution fulfilling the criteria noted above. Now, uh, in the yellow envelopes, or folders rather, you'll find uh, two forms. One is about conflict of interest, and the other is disposing of confidential materials. Uh, please sign those forms and leave them on the table, and we will collect them uh, when the council meeting is over. And at this point, the open session is completed, and you can gavel us into closure. Uh, we're going to uh, take about a 10-minute break, let them break down the uh, uh, broadcasting equipment, and then we'll resume with the closed session. I'm going to keep people here till 6 p.m. All right, we will go into closed session now. Thanks.